not speaking. Not speaking in Swedish. Look at the Sweden. I lived here for ten years. I can speak quite a little Swedish, but I can't give speeches in it yet. It's okay. <laughs> okay. We love now, anyways. We love um, you. <laughs> I am looking at this crowd. And I'm thinking how wonderful it is to have so many young people here. And I'm really, 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 really pleased. But I wonder where the hell are your parents? Yeah. 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 Could be. You see, um, I'm, 50, I'm, I'm 50 years old. So I'm your parents' age rather than this. And I have been hacking on the internet since 1979. <laughs> people who did the first wiring up of Canada that made Canada actually talk to the United States, which made the internet international. Hell yeah! 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 And I can tell you, we did not do it so that we could sell peanuts and larders to each other. <laughs> do you want to know what we did the thing for? Do you know? the internet oh that must be overblown uh-uh sure, we, we built the thing so we could share our writing our code our programs our art once we figured out how to make things that are a little more attractive than ASCII art everything with each other that's what we built the thing for Woo! and they're coming <laughs> to take it away from us no! No! <laughs> so this is this is this is point A. Your parents ought to know this. So why aren't they here? The other thing is your parents were alive when the Soviet Union was an up and coming concern and something that we worried about all the time. And one thing we know about it was that two thirds of the people were spying on the other third of the people and on each other. And everybody lived in fear because everybody knew they were breaking the laws because it was impossible to be alive without breaking the laws. So if the secret police came knocking, they would have you because no matter who you were, you were in violation of something. So everybody lived in terror. And we all sat there and said, this is a really terrible way for these poor people to live and I wish something could happen that we could rescue them from this horrible society. And we sat there and went to school and we learned how totalitarianism was, was a really bad thing. And how fascism, which we were sort of just getting over because our grand, our our parents, grandparents had sort of lived through this, was a really bad thing. And we we're all going to be incredibly vigilant. And if anything horrible like this showed up, we would stop it. Yeah. Yeah. You're the guys that are here, and you didn't go to those classes with me because you weren't even born yet. Where are your parents? How are we going to get them to understand that the bad? coming and the time for standing up is now because now people just say oh well those young shits should just learn to pay money for the files that they're sharing and you know it's 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 just used and we can ignore them all so <laughs> complete and utter lies but we need to engage the people who are older than you so uh, i want to mention one thing which you're going to have to learn if you're going to have to explain this to them. Because it's not that they don't understand technology. It's sort of that they don't understand people. And it's sort of that they don't understand that it's possible to have a better world than the one we've got now, and maybe we could work and make one of these. And I've actually been doing this all my life. If you see sort of the changes in internet technology, we're actually in better shape than we were technologically-wise. But if we're going to go back to 1940 style fascism and totalitarianism, I wouldn't say that I actually improved the world. I just thought I was doing such a thing. So, what I want to talk about is something called Pareto Optimo. You can go to Wikipedia and look it up. And what it means is everybody has some goods and things like this. They all come to a market and they all get to, and they all get to trade. So I have five apples and you have five oranges and someone has five pears and all of this. We sit there and say, alright, everybody trade. And uh, I, we end up with enough for fruit salad. And eventually there's nobody left who wants to make a trade with anybody, anything for anything. There's always someone who says, no, I'll be worse off, so I don't want to make the trade. That's called Pareto Optimal. Optimal. Now notice it doesn't say anything about fairness. And I don't say anything about whether the distribution is, is good or decent for society. It just means nobody, everybody entered into these 
contracts voluntarily and nobody's nobody's going to stop it on the grounds that I feel worse off. Most economic theories and politics and power and everybody else goes out there, goes up and says, this is a good thing. And mostly it is, you know, trade is nice and trade isn't actually a good thing. I'm not, I'm not anti-trade for all things, but every so often you have something that you should not run in a Pareto optimal way. And the standard textbook example is slavery. Things are really bad. Me and my three kids are, are starving. I go to someone else, I sell two of my kids, I make enough money so that me and my one kid survive. My two kids don't st starve to death, but they're, but they're slaves. And the, and the slave owner, he's, he's got two slaves. So absolutely everybody is better off in this situation. And it is a Pareto optimization. But it's evil. Yes. And, <laughs> and when you sit there and, and worry about them, people sit there and say yes, but all of these things are this, things like this, and you worry about the evil, you have to take a look and sit there and say, is there a problem because there's too much power someplace and it's not equally divided around? Yeah. And yeah. it's really yeah. tough to yeah. talk to politicians about that because they sit there and say, oh, but if they know the word Pareto optimal, they use it. And if they don't, when they say, well, everybody entered in these agreements free freely and this is just fine. But if you're in a state where you have to sh sell your kids because you're starving, you're not actually free. And there's a big thing about the file sharing whole thing that we, that is sort of, a, it's this, the elephant we don't want to talk about. And let's blame the problems that we have on the wretched students who are file sharing again. The thing is that artists are treated really, really lousy in this, in this community. The thing is that up until now, artists, if they want to get their work distributed, they're, you know, we're talking about, I'm talking now about people who are making digital art and things like this. You know, uh, you know I, I care about all the other artists too, but this isn't necessarily relevant to them. You have to get it distributed. And, they're distrib and this is what the publishers had. I will distribute the book for you. If you want your book to be well read, you need the distribution and that's what I give you. I'll also give you in advance so that you can quit your day job and you probably like that too. And that's the same thing that you get when you're a band. I'll give you in advance so you can quit your day job and make an album and I'll distribute it all over the world. And uh, I'm the only one who does this. I mean, we're, we're a nice, small oligarchy and we are it. And if you don't like it our way, then you don't get distribution. And that means that all the artists up until fairly recently have really, 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 really been treated badly because it was the only game in town. And the first thing we wanted to do when we built the internet was liberate the artists from these things. Everybody! We have a free distribution network. Now I still haven't figured out how to pay the artists and this sucks. Okay? The artists need to get paid. This is, this is a real problem. But the artists aren't exactly getting paid under the old system and the artists are getting oppressed because they don't have freedom to pick up their work and say you're a lousy record label you're not promoting my band properly and I'm gonna go take it someplace else why the hell is it that when I write a, when I write a computer program I can go hire a marketing agency and if I don't like their work I can criticize them and they shape up and if I really don't like it I fire them and hire someone else if you're a band leader it's too bad we're the label besides you owe us four more did you know you didn't pay that is happening for the bulk of mus musicians. Only 10% really make money on their albums. The rest maybe make money on their gigs and maybe it was sort of worth it, but the horrible existence that existing artists have is not a result of people file sharing. Woo! Yes. Uh, okay. You don't really miss, all right. <laughs> <laughs>